and welcome to In the Kitchen with Lauren. I'm your friendly host, Lauren, and today's food focus is everyone's favorite, pasta. Well, we all know a few good dishes to make with pasta, but today we're going to go ahead and put a little new wave twist on a wholesome family favorite, macaroni and cheese. Let's get started. First, we have one box of cooked elbow macaroni, one whole stalk of broccoli cut and washed, one package of my favorite Philadelphia cream cheese, and a 16 ounce container of sour cream. And then we have four bags of Kraft shredded cheese, assorted flavors to give our macaroni and cheese a special flair. So, first, what we want to do is pretty much melt all of our cheeses and our sour cream together in a pot. It's really simple, and this macaroni and cheese, I love it so much because there's really no measuring. So you can't get this wrong if you're a first-time cook. So let's try this. So you want to start off on a pretty low heat because cheese tends to cook and burn really fast. So you want to be very careful when you're cooking a cheese sauce because you can really burn it very quickly if you're not watching and paying attention to it. And for this particular macaroni and cheese, we are going to add a splash of milk just to help our cheese incorporate in milk properly. But it's perfectly fine if you don't use that. You can certainly just go ahead and dump all this stuff into a pot, let it melt down to a smooth creamy cheese, and pour it on, on top of your noodles, as well as mix in your broccoli, and you're good. But I'm going to show you the best way to do it. So let's just get our sour cream open. And we're going to start off with the entire package of sour cream. And we're just going to go ahead and get our, our saucepan on low and pour that whole package of sour cream in there, just like that. Sour cream is so good. It's one of my favorite ingredients. And it really gives cheese that extra bite when you're making a macaroni and cheese dish because that's the key to a good macaroni and cheese, is that gets you right here. So you want to start off with the sour cream and the cream cheese in the pot on low. And you're just kind of sitting there waiting for the cream cheese to melt down and heat up. That sour cream and cream cheese will begin to thin out a bit as it gets warm. And when you add those other cheeses, it will begin to make a smooth and creamy sauce. So let's just go ahead and continue stirring this here to allow it to reach that consistency. As you see, the cream cheese is already beginning to break down with the subtle heat that's coming from being on low. You definitely don't want to melt your cheeses on anything higher than a low setting on your stove. So as those two ingredients begin to combine, you can start to add your cheese really slowly or one bag at a time. And then you also want to set aside some of the last bag of cheese to put on top of your macaroni. We're just gonna move this. Keep all of your ingredients moving in the pan while you're cooking your cheese or melting your cheese, excuse me. Because cheese is just one of those ingredients that once you burn it, you really have to start all over again. So you definitely don't want to waste your time or your money with a burnt cheese sauce. It's no saving a burnt cheese sauce ever. 
So it's really melting up very nicely. And as you can see, the consistency of the cheese sauce is still rather thick. So we really want to let that still melt down a little bit more before we add that third bag of cheese because we really want a nice creamy melt on the cheese before we begin to add any more. So, we're on our last bag of cheese now. We're going to get this in. And again, we're going to save about half of the last bag of cheese just to put some on the top of our finished product to give it that cheesy look as it melts in the oven. So, to get our pan started, what we're going to do, what I like to do is start off with a nice size handful of macaroni at the bottom. Get that in there. And just cover the whole bottom of the pan with the macaroni. Add some of the broccoli. Again, a pretty nice layer. And you do want your broccoli kind of in chunks because that's the joy of adding the broccoli to it because it gives you a bite of just fresh vegetable along with your decadent cheesy macaroni and cheese. Now again, we certainly don't want to leave our cheese unattended, so we'll give that a nice stir as we're waiting here. Oh, this cheese sauce is just to die for. It's really, really gorgeous. And when you have a cheese sauce that really comes together well like this one, you can really use this base cheese sauce for a lot of different dishes. You could use it if you wanted to make, say, um, a fettuccine. You could start off with your more Italian cheeses instead of your cheddar and then move along to adding maybe an Asiago or whatever you might like in your cheese sauce. So this is just your baseline cheese sauce here. So we have two pans ready here. And our cheese sauce is just dying to be poured over this macaroni. Now the trick to pouring cheese is always this way. So we want to start with the first pan, very close together, pouring back, back, back. And we just pour about a quarter of that sauce into each pan at first because we really just want to gauge how much of this yummy cheese sauce we really need in each pan. So we're just going to sit this here and give it a stir. Just stir in that macaroni and that broccoli. Continue to add cheese, more sauce as needed because you really don't want to end up with big globs of cheese anywhere. You really want it nicely incorporated over the broccoli, nicely incorporated over the noodles. So you can kind of just continue to add cheese as you go. Here we're just tossing the cheese and getting a nice stir in there, evening out our broccoli. And then we'll just give it a nice sprinkle, cheddar on the top. And this will go into our oven for about 15 to 20 minutes on 350 degrees. And you do want to mix these 
and get them all mixed before your cheese sauce cools down. Because once your cheese sauce cools down, it gets a little more difficult to work with. It's not as creamy, it's not as uh, manageable once it's cooled. So you definitely want to get it all incorporated prior to your cheese sauce cooling. Let's just get a good mix here. And look at that broccoli. Wow, a big, huge, just green chunk of it. And then kids, you know, kids really love this version of macaroni and cheese because you're getting the best of both worlds. Everyone really loves a good, creamy, cheesy macaroni and cheese. And you know, it's really easy to disguise this broccoli as just an addition to your macaroni and cheese. And you can use spinach, you can incorporate bacon, you can incorporate mushrooms if you like, really. Sky's the limit with macaroni and cheese. You can really put anything in it you like and just tailor it to anyone's favorites. And we'll just put this one in the oven too. And really, we're putting those in the oven to just let them brown, really, and they'll get a lovely color. And um, you want to go ahead and take them out then. So we're making some extras here, and this is just going to be our creamy, classic macaroni and cheese. And I can tell already that these are just going to be to die for. Seems like when you make a little bit of something, it's always really, really good. <laughs> At least I find that. So, and this is the same thing. We're just going to go ahead and mix these right on up. And sprinkle some cheese on the top. And as you see, as the cheese starts to get a little cooler, really doesn't mix that good with the macaroni. I'm even having a little difficulty and I'm an experienced cook. So mix that up really good there. All right. Then we just want to top that with our extra cheese. I can feel myself getting fatter just cooking this. These are going to be like really, really cheesy. These are going to be excellent for lunch or a quick snack on the go. If you don't have time, you can even freeze these and have them later. So we're going to go ahead and pop these in the oven and really with our macaroni and cheese, it's kind of already done because the cheese sauce has been cooked, the macaroni has been cooked, so really we're just waiting for them to brown. So let's go ahead and pop these in the oven. Again, 350 degree oven for about 15-20 minutes until a golden brown. And for our next recipe today, we have another family classic, cheese-filled tortellini, grilled chicken, and alfredo. This is really one of my favorites because it's a quick, easy, one-pot dish, and it feeds a lot of people. And everyone is going to be happy. Who doesn't love cheese and macaroni together? We already shown that with the macaroni and cheese. But this is another way to add cheese and pasta and come up with a great dish. Let's get started. So, we'll need about a pound of chicken breast tenderloins cut up in cube size. And we have one bag of your favorite cheese-filled tortellini. And we let this thaw because it's just better that way. And then 
we have one jar of any of your favorite Alfredo sauce. Now to start, what we're going to need to do is brown our chicken. Now first, we're going to season our chicken lightly with some Italian seasonings in a grinder. We don't really want a really heavy seasoning on the chicken because we already have our Alfredo sauce. So just a few shakes from the grinder to get that started. Next, what we want to do is get our saucepan going to about medium. And at the same time, we also want to fill a saucepan with water and get it starting to boil for our tortellini. Now, tortellini is one of those dishes that you really don't want to cook or boil long because you want to maintain the flavor when we go to add it to the chicken and the sauce. So we're going to start off with about a teaspoon, a tablespoon of butter, and I love butter, okay? And we'll just get our butter in the pan, and we'll start off with about a pinch of minced garlic just right in a jar. You don't want too much because you really do not want to overpower the flavors inside of the tortellini. So with this, with the garlic and the butter in the pan on about medium heat, we're just going to go ahead and start to heat up that garlic. We're just going to start to heat up that garlic in the pan and we just want to stir our chicken in those seasonings a little bit just to get them well incorporated. As you see our pan's pretty hot here so we're just going to add all that chicken at once. We really just want to get an even layer of the chicken on the pan so that it can cook evenly. Now the chicken will take about 10 or 15 minutes just to make sure that it's fully cooked. And you really want to make sure that you have it in a thin layer on your pan so that the chicken cooks evenly also without sticking or burning. Now we're bringing our water to a boil also. And for tortellini, sometimes they tend to get a little stuck together. So I like to add a little extra virgin olive oil to our pan here to make sure that it doesn't stick. Now you can just add your regular old olive oil or even a little bit of vegetable oil to your water to make sure that your tortellini don't stick together either. So we're just browning the chicken here. So we're just browning our chicken in the pan here. And we kind of just want to give them a little turn just to make sure that they grill evenly because we really don't want our chicken to get a sear mark on it which is those browning marks when it kind of gets the oil and, the, and everything going in it and we just don't want that for this particular dish. We just want a clear, crisp, white chicken breast nicely cooked and seasoned with our Italian seasonings and a little bit of butter. 
So we're just turning our chicken. The aroma from this chicken is phenomenal. We're just gonna go ahead and let that go on a medium heat for a little while. And we're gonna add our tortellini to the water that's already come to a boil. And in that water is just a little bit of olive oil that we've got going here. Always keep a pair of kitchen shears around. They're just great to have. So we're going to slowly add the tortellini into that bowl and water with the olive oil in it so it doesn't stick. And this chicken is just is just doing phenomenal in this pan here. We just want to make sure that these chunks are really cooked well um, and air, all the juices are still there because we certainly do want to make for a really juicy combination once we do add our tortellini to that. But we also want to make sure that our chicken is done. So we're just going to let our chicken go and it's just the aroma, oh man, the aroma coming off of this chicken is just really great. And this is one of the moments that I wish we had smell-o-vision because I just really want you guys to try this recipe and just smell the aromas that come from this chicken. Oh my gosh, it's phenomenal. It'll fill your whole house. Everyone will just be asking, what's for dinner, Mom? This looks great. So this is just turning out to be a really good batch of chicken. It's really frying up nicely. We have a bit of water in the pan, and that's okay. Uh, if you do see some water in your pan accumulating at the bottom, because it will certainly help the chicken retain its moisture, and it will also help the chicken cook thoroughly. So we're just going to go ahead and let that cook. Back over here to the tortellini, we're just going to give it a toss. And really, the tortellini is already thawed. We don't need a strong boil on the tortellini because, again, it's one of those pastas that is very delicate, and we really don't want it to be overcooked. So then we'll just turn it into mush. So we're just stirring our chicken here, making sure that we have a great combination here of the browning of the chicken and the seasonings. Uh, you also, like I said, want to make sure that you're keeping your chicken moving because you really don't want to get to the point where your chicken has a brown mark on it. You really want this chicken just clear. Uh, white meat chicken, you really don't want too many brown marks on it. Just because when you mix it with the cheese sauce, brown marks are going to turn the cheese sauce another color. It's going to turn it a brownish color. So you definitely want to make sure that you're keeping your chicken moving in your pan and you're not incorporating any of those brownish marks there. Just keep that moving here. Now the tortellini has started to boil and it's really just time to remove it from this here because they're really done. So just a few minutes in the pot for the tortellini. And we want to drain those. them there drained and ready to be added into the chicken mixture. Now as we're still stirring the chicken here, we lost one. As we're still stirring the chicken, we definitely want to notice that the water in the pan with the chicken is disappearing. 
because you really don't want to add a cheese sauce with water. So you certainly do want to make sure that the water in the pan does cook out. Now this part is a little tricky because you want to make sure that the water cooks out and then as soon as the water cooks out, that's when we're going to go ahead and incorporate our sauce and our tortellini. So you really want to watch your chicken at this point. This is a really crucial cooking point for the chicken because we want to make sure that all of the water is absorbed from the pan. However, again, we really don't want to incorporate any dark spots on our chicken. We want it to remain all very crystal clear colored chicken because when we do add the sauce here, we certainly want it to maintain its color. So a few more minutes of stirring and I think we'll be a-okay to get moving right along to the next step in this fabulous dish. Because we want to make sure that all of the water is absorbed from the pan. However, again, we really don't want to incorporate any dark spots on our chicken. We want it to remain all very crystal clear colored chicken because when we do add the sauce here, we certainly want it to maintain its color. So a few more minutes of stirring and I think we'll be a-okay to get moving right along to the next step in this fabulous dish. Okay, now that our chicken is the perfect color, we can go ahead and incorporate the rest of our ingredients and finish this fabulous dish. So we have our package of tortellini that we boiled and strained. So we're going to put that in on the top of our chicken here. And then we're going to take our jar of Bertoli Alfredo sauce and just pour it over. Yummy. And then we're just going to turn our stove on to low. Because really at this point, we're just heating and getting everything all incorporated together. So let's just stir all this in so you can get a look at this fabulous, fabulous mixture here. It's so just a crowd pleaser and it's such an easy one pot meal. As you see, as long as you keep your chicken spinning and in that pan so that it doesn't change colors, you will almost always come out with a perfect tortellini alfredo. This meal is just to die for. And continuing on with our food focus of the day, pasta, we have another family favorite that I'm going to show you. It's tuna macaroni salad. It's a family classic. It's really quick and easy to mix up. And this is my homemade recipe. First, you're going to need four cans of any old chunk like tuna in water, drained. This here is one box of elbow macaroni, boiled and drained. This is four boiled eggs, chopped. One red onion, chopped. One jar of sweet relish. We just need a little dash of my good old favorite Larry seasoning salt here. And we'll need about a half of this jar of mayonnaise for this recipe. And just a few squirts of Golden's spicy brown mustard. This does the trick. So let's get started. So first we're going to start with a big bowl here. We're going to take the macaroni and just incorporate it in this bowl here. We're going to go ahead and add the four jars. We're going to go ahead and add the four cans of tuna. We're going to 
gonna go ahead and add the four chopped eggs. And we're gonna go ahead and add chopped red onion. It smells delicious. I just love the smell of a good red onion because it has that sweet but oniony smell and it just reminds you of summer. Then we're going to season it with a few shakes of good old Larry's to taste. Once again, this whole jar, believe it or not, just open it, dump it right on in. I love recipes when you don't really have to measure. It's so much easier. And like I said again, a few squirts of good old golden spicy brown mustard. Then we have our mayonnaise here. We're going to get this opened. And ready. And again, we're going to just add about half of this jar of mayonnaise to this. So that's about half. Making samba beats here. So we'll just get that mayonnaise off of this spoon. And then we're just going to give this a stir. Now, honestly, when I'm at home, I really don't use spoons to stir things. I just pop on a set of gloves and stir it with my hands. That's the best way to get all of your ingredients well incorporated, especially when you're making a salad like this one. So. We're just mixing and making sure you get to the bottom of your pan to mix all of those ingredients until they're very well incorporated together. And you don't want to add any more mayonnaise until you're sure that you've already mixed it in. Because I'll tell you one thing, with tuna macaroni salad, it'll look like you've got too much mayonnaise until one hour passes and those noodles soak up all that mayonnaise then you'll end up adding just a little bit more so right now it's really looking excellent here this is exactly what we wanted it to look like and again this is really as you can see one of the quickest salads, once you get everything chopped up, that you can make and have a quick dinner or even lunch for your family. So let's just give this a good another toss. Make sure everything is well incorporated into the salad here. And it really is. And I'll tell you what, I know I said that it smelled wonderful 80 times, but this smells wonderful. I really wish we had smell-o-vision right now. Because I'm telling you, the smell of the onion and the tuna mixed with the relish is to die for. I even want to just take a big spoonful of it and just sample it right now. I'm not. We'll let our camera person sample it. Here you go, camera. Taste it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I love it. So here you have it, folks. Four classic recipes out of pasta. We have our tuna macaroni salad, our chicken alfredo tortellini, 
our home style baked macaroni and cheese and our baked macaroni and cheese with broccoli. All classics and all crowd pleasers. So join us again for another episode of In the Kitchen with Lauren and I hope you're going to be willing and eager to try some of these recipes in your own kitchen. Thanks again and bon appetit. Thank you.